Hello. Hello. Is this Bud? Is that right. is Oscar? Yeah. You got All right, Oscar. You got about ten minutes or no? Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Now I want I wanted to call you. I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, about your past history. You think you're ready to do that? Uh, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Don't sound so excited, bud. Uh, <laughs> <clears throat> anyway, of course, you know, before TV 40, of course, you were an engineer for what? TV channel 54. Correct. All right. So now you, you told me, cause you know, you and I, we've worked together now. You've let me, uh, have fun at your station for what, 25 years or so? At least, I think it was. Yeah, we started in 1990. Yeah. And I think it was uh, uh, Dollar Bill that started before me, but I think he was there, what, two years or something, then I got in there with you? Yeah. Yeah, something like that anyway. But anyway, you were telling me some stories about TV Channel 54. And now, does this go back to, was Ron Mann part of that too, or? Uh, I'm not sure. He wasn't there when I was there. Oh, okay. He may have been before that. All right. But but you you told me some stories of some of the crazy stuff that you guys did over there. Can you, can you want to share some of those or no? <laughs> well, it's kind of hard to say. Uh, we did a lot of funny programs. We did some live off the street programs, and uh, uh, the bingo, of course, and the fiery line. Uh, then were our two biggies. Yeah. The uh, uh, other programs, we did some actual live weddings at one time. Really. Uh, people got married at the Oxnell Hotel. We actually did a live wedding. It was Zinn's wedding. It was a huge wedding at the time. Zinn's owned a large restaurant down on Western Avenue. Do you remember and the I year? Remember or close to well, it? Well, I can tell you offhand, it would have been over 50 years ago. Okay, all right. So That's just an estimate. Yeah. Now, didn't you didn't you guys like do goofy things behind the camera and stuff when people were on the air, or kind of like we did uh, yeah, at TV one Forty? Of the, one, of the, one of the fun things used to be when the news guys would go out there, we go out and pull their pants down. They'd be standing behind the puppet in their underwear. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> and one of the other things we did at one time was when they used to do the weather outside on the window. They reversed the camera. So they would draw on the map and show the weather. I mean, and of course, using the big picture windows at the Oxbow Hotel, uh, somebody dressed up in a gorilla suit and attacked him outside. (laughs) 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 Was just that was about it. It was just kind of fun things all the time. Well, yeah, but we Um, but we got away with that stuff too at TV Forty. I mean, that was the uh, when you started TV Forty all those years. How many years ago was it now that you started TV Forty? Well, it was in 1990. I actually went on the air April 2nd. Okay, and that was W M. No, April, April 1st. I think it was April 1st or 2nd. Oh, April Fool's Day. Perfect. Correct. <laughs> w W M K G, and yeah. and it's still well, at the it, time it was W. At the time it was W 48 K. Remember? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Then the uh, W M K G came later because M K G is the uh, airport designation for Muskegon. And WMKG was the original call letters from Channel 54 at the Occidental Hotel. Oh, okay. Okay. So, so I don't it, well, well, what call letters does it have even now, or is it even on the air anymore? I don't even know. Well, it's on the air. It's on WMKG. Okay. He's um, running about 1,000 watts with a 10.9 dB gain antenna, but he's at 85 feet. He's looking, um, the new owner, which is Steve, He's looking at moving the tower to uh, possibly, or the transmitter to possibly Grand Valley's tower, which is a thousand foot. Oh, okay. He's looking around for different options for different towers. He now has a brand new transmitter, which is on channel 31. Uh, it's a 1500 watt, or, right? 1500 or 3000 watt, I'm not sure which. And he's got all the brand new feed line and everything ready to go. Okay. It's a huge spool of feed line. So, and the antenna. It's just a question of uh, figuring out which tower he wants to go on and one thing or another. Okay. Well, that's good. I'm glad it's not going to die because for a while there, I thought it was just going to fade away. So. No, he's, he's not going to let it die. He's trying to keep it alive. Well, that's good. He's uh, more or less kind of sitting back and waiting to 
find the proper tower. He's been looking at different towers, the old MUS towers and things like that, and, and uh, downtown buildings and this type of thing. He also even considered reconstructing the tower out here on Mill Iron, going back to the 200-foot tower here. Yeah. So. Which he had there uh, for quite a while. Yeah. Yeah. The problem is the, um, it's not just a question of where you put the tower. You still have to get the signal to the tower. Right. Now, we broadcast originally to the tower on Channel 67. And later on, we decided that, that we kept bringing up them transmitters. We decided we would do what we do instead is we were on cable TV. So we just ran a cable TV line out to the transmitter. Okay. And that worked out better for us. Okay. Uh, we didn't have to maintain the extra transmitters and everything like that. And that worked out really well. Now, now uh, in addition, in addition to that, we added the other three channels, the sub channels as well. Right. So we were actually broadcasting four channels at once. Okay. And, uh, the other three channels were also off cable TV. They were sub channels, but they were, uh, one was a shopping channel. One was a, a, a movie channel. And, um, I don't remember what the third one was. I don't remember. Part of the time we ran weather on that too. Yeah, yeah. So I remember when that when you first came out with that stuff, we were trying to figure out what we could use it to sell to make make some money to sell. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it was. Uh, we were actually it was doing quite well financially because uh, the three networks were sending us a monthly check, not a huge one, but a small check monthly to, to broadcast them. Right. And that worked out quite well. Yeah. Uh, in addition to that, we had uh, our normal sponsors, one thing or another. Right, right. And uh, which you know, which we were lucky that way too. Yeah. But uh, as as you know, we had you for a sales department and other salesmen as well. Right. We also carried a lot of uh, bought and programs or airtime. People would buy airtimes as you also did. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I had. We'd sell blocks of airtime, and that worked out really well with all the churches and everything. Right. So. Well, in the early the early days when we when we first started when I first came there, we were doing all kinds of. I was running a lot of the uh, paid shows that were coming on. Um, I remember there was some kind of a rock show that I did there from some guy that came in there, and I ran the board for that. And and then there was, uh, of course, I did my LVTV for a long time too, and had a lot of fun with that. And then uh, we all- bingo, of course, can't forget bingo. Yeah. Bingo and Firing Line were our biggies. The uh, bingo lasted almost 20 years there. Yeah. Uh, finally, it got to be too much. Uh, every Thursday, we had to be down there for like 20 years yeah. to run the bingo. The other one, uh, at one time, Paul Billings, which now owns a radio station in Muskegon, he did a, uh, a show there for quite a while as well. Oh, yeah. I remember that, too. Yeah. And then and he, still, of course, he still owns a radio station in to my knowledge, he's still on the air. Right. Charles Rick used to buy a lot of sports programs on there. Oh, yeah. We know, about, we know about Chucky. Yeah. Yeah. He used to buy a lot of air time as well. Yeah, yeah. my buddy. Anyway. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what even go there? But anyway, yeah. So, but but bingo was always uh, interesting, too, because we had so many different people that we put on there. And I remember the one time you let me call bingo, and they called up and said, yeah. Get that guy out of there. He's, he's joking around too much. We don't need that crap. We just want to hear the, <laughs> the balls get picked. So, yeah. So, yeah. It was... uh, Bill Gimler, uh did that for quite a while. Oh, yeah. He ran the bingo. Yeah. Uh, Bill Stoddard. Uh, we used to have a lot of Cub Scouts would come in there. What they called the, uh, they weren't Cub Scouts. They were just before they became Cub Scouts. And I can't think of the name of them. They did a lot of, you know, shows. They came on the show several times. Yeah. A lot of kids did. Well, the Cub Scouts, Weebles, and Boy Scouts, but I, I, I don't yeah. know. Anyway, so. yeah. And then we, you know, there used to be times when, when kids would come there and we'd show them around the station. It was like, okay, that's it, pretty much, you know. So it's, yeah. it's it was small, but it worked. So. Yeah, a lot of people wanted to see the station. We first went on the air. They gave us less than six months. Yeah. They didn't think we'd survive because the uh, previous stations, in fact, there were two in Muskegon at one time. Channel 13 was actually out of Muskegon, the Occidental Hotel. Right. And uh, the, um, and I'm trying to remember the name. He used to do a one-minute live news program from the Occidental Hotel every day. Okay. Before my time, so. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, 
Channel 54. The 13, of course, moved to Grand Rapids, which was a smart move on their part. Right. And the 54, which eventually moved to uh, Allendale, too. Uh, and that was, you know, more profitable for them right. as well. Well, you know, the so. one, th- one thing I got to give props for with t- uh, TV 13 is they still do probably the most Muskegon news than any of the other yeah. ones, that's for sure. So. Well, that's what we did. When we right. did our news program, it was 99% or 90% all Muskegon. Right. Uh, we rarely ever, ever did anything out of town. Uh, we also had a very good sportsman, Don Bennett, uh, and he did a beautiful job on the sports Yeah, uh, at one time, too. Now, we had, so, now, now it was Tim, um, Tim that did, did uh, the anchor for a long time also. Was it Sonia? Sonia, she, yeah, who also, and Sonia both. Yeah, 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 they did a beautiful job as well. And Sonia, I think Larry uh, Taylor was part of it at one time too, wasn't he? Yeah, a long time ago. Yeah. And the best part about it is, is all the time that we had all the news programs on, we never once got any type of a discrimination suit or any type of a lawsuit saying that we said the wrong thing. Yeah. You know, and yeah. I uh, owe that to Tim and Sonia both. They did a fantastic job that way they are protecting the station all the time right right and that's that's really something to be proud of especially for Even tim to, to be to be doing the night the right thing so yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was a card so, or he is yeah. a card i should say he's still around yeah. so um yeah. now the the one thing that uh, i remember the, the time when you uh had i think you hired or they, they became part of or something was j ron and uh Sharon Lee, and they did the video country yeah. show. Yeah, they did that for quite a while, too. Yeah. And Sharon, of course, managed the station for a while. And later on, my wife and I took it over after J. Ron's uh, death. Right. And we took over the station ourselves and managed it. Yeah. Roger Scudder, of course, ran a lot of shows for us. And Roger Scudder, which was a Fruitport media teacher at the time, he came in and he turned into an advisor for us. And right. He really was a, a, a real asset to the station because he showed us how to use the new computers and everything. Right. And how to do editing. And Roger spent an endless amount of time correcting our mistakes and showing <laughs> us better ways to do things. Well, yeah. if it wasn't for he Roger, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have learned half, half the stuff that I knew, right? You know, because he, I, he I thought he was I, a fantastic, yeah. fantastic asset to the station. He, uh, taught us so much, you know, that we did not know because it had been like, oh, far, probably 30 years that I was in broadcasting. All of a sudden I decided to do it again. Yeah. Know, yeah. Out of a clear blue. Now, <laughs> of course, uh, I was one of the first ones there to run the board for the first AM Muskegon, which was yeah. Annette Bach and Ron Morris. They call themselves. That isn't their real names, Correct. but that's what they yeah. called themselves. And, uh, that lasted for about a year. But uh, then, of course, yeah. the amazing Peggy White Knight uh, took over. Well, it was actually Peggy and, yeah. and Paul Phillips for a little bit. But, uh, yeah, then it was just yeah. Peggy. So Yeah, she did a beautiful job. She did. Yeah, right up, you know, I miss she her, right too. Up, I do know. miss her. She she was a great lady. She was a one yeah, great she lady. Was. So, so. Uh, she did. She was a total believer in Muskegon, and she pushed really hard on the station right. to bring the Silver Sides here and to get funding for the Froenthal Center. Right. Yeah, uh, in theater. And she asked me at the time, she said, Do you care if I do that? I says, No, by yeah. all means, do everything you can to bring the Pro and Thaw Theater back to life and the Milwaukee Clipper and bring it back. And people laughed. They said, You'll never bring that Clipper back. Well, Peggy did. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, you know, so it was an amazing job that she did. I'm hearing uh, that, it's totally, a, that it's going forward now, too, finally. So the Clipper. She what? I hear the Clipper's finally going forward now, too. So. I'm not sure where, where we're at with that. I, yeah. Believe it or not, I haven't visited yet. I've visited a lot of the other boats downtown and that, but I've not uh, got it on the Clipper. Yeah. Last well, time I was on the Clipper was when I fixed their camera system, which was 60 years ago. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I happened to see it. <laughs> I happened to see it. We were going across on that, uh, uh, that Lakeshore boat that goes across to Milwaukee. And it's right across in the same area there, so I happy to see it. It doesn't look too bad. It's a little rusty, you know, but uh, it it doesn't look bad. Look, it's a nice looking ship. Well, for, first time I, I saw it. Spend, well, I guess they spend a lot of time maintaining. It's mostly volunteers, right. in my understanding. So 
Yeah, well, you know, Ron Morris is, of course, that's not his real name. But anyway, Ron's over there. I don't know if he still is, but he was over there on uh, the uh, LST-393. He's uh, part of that. No, I didn't know that. Yeah. That's Ron Morris is part of that? Yeah, yeah. No, I went, I went all through that ship. It was quite amazing. Yeah, it is. And, and then I went up to the UP and went through all the ships up there. Uh I seen a lot of the red uh, relics from the Edmund Fitzgerald up there. Oh yeah, yeah, too. at the White at uh, White Fish Point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been there too. It's uh, it's pretty amazing. Um, yeah, yeah, Ron. Uh, you you know, it seems hard to believe, but hey, Ron just uh, turning eighty. So there you go. Oh my gosh! I know, right? I hate to tell you. <laughs> I, I hate to tell you this, but I'm getting close to that myself. Oh, I know, I know, I know. We're all getting old. <laughs> that's that's another reason for getting rid of the station. Yeah. By the way, did you get my email on Paul's Christmas lights? Oh yeah, yeah, I did. I passed it on to him. He said he's going to give you a call. So. Oh, them, them, well, Channel 13 is featuring him, and he's got probably one of the most beautiful light displays in the scheme I've ever seen. Yeah, he did. He's at. Uh, like uh, Hall and Quarterline, isn't it? Well, no, it's on MacArthur Road, but it's like MacArthur right. MacArthur and yeah, MacArthur we, Quarterline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Quarterline or, Sher- or Sheridan, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, you, you won't miss it. <laughs> only, only display i ever seen better was uh, at the Detroit Zoo. Oh, okay. And that, that was, you know, several miles walking through that thing. Yeah. Freezing. <laughs> Well, you got to, you got to, like I say, you got to admit, I mean, I, not only is it like an awesome display, but I mean, Paul's 81 years old and he does that all himself. He doesn't have any help from kids That's or anything. A, I know. A beautiful job. He must have worked most of the summer on that thing. No, Just no, he, he doesn't like, cause he has a, he has a big display out there for Halloween and, uh, he does pretty good size display for that. And then he takes that down and then he starts on the Christmas one. So. Yeah. Well, Hey, believe me, it's worth the trip out there to see it. Yeah, yeah. So over on MacArthur Road, front and backyard, both. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so anyway, yeah. As far as TV forty, though, I mean, I've never had. You know, I, I always I was talking to a bunch of the guys that I work with at Sunny FM, and um, you know, I had a ball there at Sunny FM, but I think I, it couldn't could never compare with the the fun that I had at TV forty. I mean, you know, you were one of those guys that let us pretty much do. <laughs> What we wanted to do, as long as we weren't going to lose a license, so you know, yeah, as long as they didn't put the license in jeopardy, yeah. I really didn't care. Yeah, we had uh, fun. But we, it was, it was supposed to be a what it was supposed to be. It was supposed to be a local station, right. a local talent, and that's what it turned out to be. Well, it did. It was exactly yeah. what I wanted. Yeah, it was you know to highlight the Muskegon area and do local talent, local things, and nothing too serious. Yeah, you know, what I'm saying it's. Uh, it was a very enjoyable thing. I can remember some of the firing line shows where they actually put armed guards there to protect the people on the show. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, I remember we got, I uh, remember. we got Klaus helpers to, to do the firing line. Yeah. He really loved it. He loved doing that. So, I mean, well, Klaus was a really, really great at it too. Yeah, he was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I haven't heard a thing from him or how he's doing or anything. I haven't either. I've I haven't either. Wondered. Yeah. So, but, uh, yeah, we had him up. I mean, I'm trying to remember how many people, but I remember that one show that I arranged that I thought would be just a great show, uh, for Fireland. I put, I put, uh, what was it Pam Roberts? It was a radio thing. Pam Roberts, Jojo Gerard, uh, Mark Dixon, I think. Anyway, there was yeah, three, three or four, yeah, three or four radio personalities and, you know, to talk about radio, but none of them would say anything because they figured, well, they could get fired tomorrow and have to go work at in one of the other stations that they're talking about. So they didn't say anything. So anyway, well, you know, when we first went on the air, we went on the air at, at 65 feet with a hundred watt transmitter. Then we went to 85 feet with a thousand watt transmitter. Then we went to 199 feet with a thousand watt transmitter. Then we went to 199 feet with a 1500 watt digital transmitter. Right. And at the time, uh, when it was sold, we were reaching all the way to Grand Rapids. Right. Uh, covering all of Whitehall, Holland, all of Grand Haven. We had basically a 30 mile range at the time. Yeah. So it did cover a lot of territory. Well, it's nice to hear that Steve's going to get it, uh, get it up a little bit more and get the, cause right now it's you, Muskegon is about the only place they can, Norton Shores is about the only place they can get it. Isn't it right now? The way it's sitting. Well, it's, it's covering, uh, 
about a five five mile range, maybe check. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not not really sure. I didn't uh didn't really check on it that much. Which is what I could I do with just an AM transmitter, but anyway. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I know he's had some, you know, some technical problems one thing or another. My kids have been down there both you knew and he had him helping him with his transmitters. Yeah. One thing or another. And he does have some beautiful brand new transmitter ready to go on the air. Well the guy's got and a, he's got a He's got a couple of dollars. Cable. He's got a couple of dollars, yeah. so that's that's a good thing. Yeah. He's got a spool of cable for a new antenna feed line. Yeah. Ours was seven eighths. And this new feed line cable, he's got about four inch. Okay. So it's got a huge, monstrous spool. It was kind of funny because it was sitting outside the station. And I said, Aren't you afraid somebody will steal that? He said, Nobody can move it. Right. Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> he said, it's there permanently. Yeah. He could finally move it inside. But it was kind of comical to see such a huge spool of wire like that. Yeah. Now, um, go ahead. You know, he's uh, he's uh, very interested in promoting Michigan himself. Right. And I think once he gets his new transmitter online or a new antenna and transmitter, it's going to make a huge difference. Well, he's got a lot of property, I think, right here in Muskegon, too. So he's got he's got a lot of reason to want to promote Muskegon, I think. so. Well, yeah, he's got quite a bit on the lake shore, the old right. foundry site down there. Yeah. And I'm not sure just how he's involved in that one, you know, but I do know that there's some interest in it. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, like I say, right now is kind of a, kind of a time where I don't think anybody can pretty much promote anything because you've got, you know, with the COVID and everything. Now, you know, the thing about it is the last time I ran into you was in uh, the E and a grocery store or something. And, and, um, yeah, you said you weren't going to Florida this year because of the COVID was so bad, but now <laughs> it's worse here than it was. That is over there. So I don't know. Uh, well, I'm probably pretty about much the same. isolated in my home. Yeah, me too. Pretty me well too. staying at home. Yeah. Other than to get groceries, that's about it. Yeah. I don't even do that. I just order them. <laughs> I don't even leave. I don't leave anymore. I'm I'm a chicken. Yeah. What can I say? When you get when you get to a certain age and you have certain uh, heart conditions and all that good stuff, it's like, nah, I think I'll stay home. So I won't yeah. take my chances. But um, yeah. I'm glad to hear that you, how are you, is Mickey doing good too? Oh, yeah, beautifully. Good. And, and, of course, we've been doing a lot of remodeling on our house, one thing or another. Okay. We did the bedrooms, one of the bathrooms. we got another couple of rooms to do yet, one thing or another. Well, maybe um, maybe next year you can hire Paul to, to decorate your house with his lights. <laughs> yeah. Well, it keeps me keeping me busy doing working around the house. Yeah. I do miss the station. I, I really do. I, uh, But it, it was heartbreaking to wake up in the middle of the night and be off the air. Yeah. Or having something go wrong. It was just... You know, just uh, heartbreaking. Yeah. And you were always worried about, you know, the the taxes, the payments, the electric bills and everything all the time. And, you know, to have enough income to cover the employees' wages and one thing or another. Right. I think you'll, you'll recall I never, ever missed a wage for anybody. No, no, so, no. I mean, I was, I think I was uh, station, well, you called me station manager, even though I really wasn't. But yeah. I was there for about, for about a year, I think. And I, I. Never lost, I never missed a wage, that's for sure. Or never missed a paycheck, well, rather. Was, well, that was always a fear of mine. That, yeah. Uh, that's the, always the most important thing. So. Yeah. But we were very lucky that way. Uh, we had, you know, take, took several lightning hits through the years, but most of them didn't do a lot of damage. Right. One of them did take out our big transmitter at one time. But, uh, you know, it was, of course, covered by insurance. So. We know towards the end there, I used to do a lot of different programs and, and put them on, you know, pay to put them on there and uh that's how yeah. i'd make my money because i'd sell them like the car shows and all that kind of stuff and uh well that and it was it was kind of like when 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 you sold it it was like okay so i can't do that anymore <laughs> now what do i do you know well that was nice because he gave it a lot of good local pro- programs yeah like the pumpkin run and all the parades yeah it was, yeah, it was all here local recall, at one time we were doing like 10 15 parades a, a year. year yeah yeah, I've got. I mean, I've, we did every every actually, parade in the area. I'm actually no how small or big they were. I'm actually sitting here list, looking at uh, 200 of the parades that we did and that I've saved yeah. on DVD. I have no idea what to do with them, but I have <laughs> I have a bunch of parades that I've that I did. I mean, I, a lot of people did it. The other one, the other person too that uh, I remember yeah. that that did a lot of videotaping for you was was Ray Williams. So you know. He, when we did a lot of news programs too, yep. if you recall, we towards the end we destroyed all their news footage. Right. So, 
that was sure that you know they would come back to haunt us or somebody right, else. Right. And then we had uh, Rick Rick Carvey, which I haven't seen him for ever. He was he was a ball to work a, with. Yeah, it's been about five ten years. Yeah, I seen him a while back at uh, Little River. Okay, but that was the last I seen him. I don't know how he's doing, but he was very good on production at one time. Oh, he too. was awesome. He was awesome. We him he and had I a lot, of, a lot of talent. Him and I had a great time putting together LBTV too. I mean his his sense of humor was was way beyond my. <laughs> He made, yeah. he made me laugh big time, yeah. but, but, Rick, uh, Rick was, Rick was very, very good at editing and pr- yeah. filming and things like that. He was exceptionally and, good at it. And that was back in the day when it was, when it was difficult with VHS and, you know, SVHS yeah. and all that good or good stuff, the AB roll and all that crap. Um, yeah, yeah, now it's like nothing with the digital, but anyway, um, the other one that I remember that I haven't seen or heard about for uh, such a long time that we always had a good time with was uh, John Hooker. Yeah. Don't know what happened to him. I don't, I heard he's working at some radio station, but I don't know where or what. Really? I don't know, but I, I don't know. I don't know what happened to John. Yeah. Uh, there, I had he was from food too people. with Roger Scudder. Wasn't he with, with Roger's group at one time? Yeah. Yeah. Now Roger, Roger of course is still around. He's not teaching anymore. Just, right. I, I usually, if you, Get up early in the morning, see him jogging down the road. He's lost a lot of weight. Looks really? Really good the last season. That's good. Yeah. So now I tried to, I tried to, it. I tried to friend Roger on Facebook, but he wouldn't respond. To me. So. <laughs> Poor Roger. I remember I used to ask him so many questions. It was like I, I can imagine he doesn't want to talk to me right now. What yeah. kind of questions he got for me now? Don't worry, Roger. I don't do it anymore. So. He's, he's doing a lot of photographing of wildlife and things like okay. that. Okay. Right All right. Yeah see a lot of that on his facebook because he was the, he know, was teaching to, at the college there for a while i know that but he must yeah, have, yeah. In grand grand valley or somewhere it wasn't yeah. in muskegon right so but yeah but, roger uh, scudder i mean I, I owe him a lot because i mean if it wasn't for him i don't think i would have learned half the stuff that i did and you know oh yeah i i was i would have been lost without roger roger's such an asset to the station right you know he just did he taught me so much more yeah, you know, he he brought us from slide projectors to computers, and that was a huge step. Oh, I remember. Oh, that that's we got to talk about that just before we we leave here. Sure. <laughs> yeah. That was the thing I remember when I first when I first started working there, and I was running the board, and you had a humongous slide projector. I mean, this thing was huge. It had to been what weigh about two tons, I would think. Oh yeah, we had we had that, and originally that's what. For stations used for commercials, and uh, yeah, for yeah. commercials with slides, and they use sixteen millimeter film. So we had two sixteen millimeter film projectors, although we never did use them. Right. And at uh, one time, I put them up for sale, and they ended up at Color by Deluxe. <laughs> I tell you they're, what, they're I could the I could use them. some of that stuff now to transfer because I do a lot of transfer. It, you know these eight millimeter projectors and stuff, I go through them like a, you know, cause you know, you got a bunch of films to transfer. They end up dying on you or lose the bulb and you, where are you going to find the bulb? And I tell you all this well, old, re- old stuff. You, you recall when uh, machine community college got away from their slide projectors and their film things. I bought all the bulbs from there. Oh, okay. Yeah. I forgot and, about that. And yeah. I had huge bushel baskets full of brand new bulbs. Yeah. Well, the end result is I gave a lot of them away to, uh, well, quite a few to Steve Darian, which was doing slides at the time. Yeah. And I imagine you probably got some. I don't know. I, 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 I A lot of them I sold on eBay, and they went for a huge amount. Really? Uh, I got a bunch of bulbs yeah. sitting in my closet. and I should put those on eBay. Uh, anyway. Yeah, you should put them on because these bulbs now, what used to cost 2 and $3, are now 25 and 30 and Yeah. I'll, they got very expensive because they're just not producing as many as they used to anymore. Right, right. Um, yeah. Now, is with the uh, slide projector, I, you know, we'd slow, show the slides in a order, and then we'd put it uh, had the commercial on a cart machine, right? We'd play the cart machine, right. yeah, the, for the audio. So, yeah, yeah, that was that was pretty primitive, but we it made worked, you know. And the, the oh, thing. Yeah. The thing about it was is, that, is all the toggle switches. I remember all those trying to switch all the toggle switches to go from one thing to another. That was that was yeah. quite an experience for a for a guy with a handicap. I tell you. <laughs> oh yeah. Now, if you're running slide projectors now, 
what you should do is put a dimmer switch on the light bulb because you don't need the full brilliance anymore. Right, right. <laughs> and, and, and your bulbs will last 10 times as long. Right, right. So, um, so and that's what we, basically we had dimmer switches on them down there too. Yeah. So. I remember that when we first started out, though, we had those some of the cameras, I guess you got from MCC or Grand Valley or something. I can't remember, but they, we always had trouble color balancing the whole thing. So you oh, go to, pain, yeah. yeah, you go to one and you'd have a kind of a bluish tint and the other one have a reddish tint. And yeah, so yeah. anyway, yeah, yeah it was, best, it was fun best, though. We, the best studio cameras we ever had were the high eight digital. Right. And we bought them at, uh. I believe it or not, a Circuit City at the time, and they worked out well. Well, see, that's what I use for for monitor cameras now is high eight digital, just because they work so well for monitor cameras. So, and you can put them, switch them, and put them right into the computer and record whatever you want. So, someday I should give you the. If you have a high eight digital. I should give you the tape for the power falling down. Oh yeah, that'd be great. You you would love that tape. Yeah. You could make, you know, put that on the put air on, and they, they on actually Facebook. dropped a 200 foot tower here. Yeah. Yeah. So that'd be fun. It came down with a crunch. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I don't mean maybe. Well, you know, you, you think about all the style, the footage that you had, I mean, and I, cause I mean, I've got books and, and books and books of DVDs with footage of different things that we did. And you know, it's like 25, 30 years that I worked off and on with you. Oh and, yeah, and I don't know what to do with this stuff. <laughs> I mean, just the football oh. games. I gave the football games to the library because I didn't. You know, what else am I supposed to do with them? You know, so you don't give them to the schools. No, well, I don't. I donated the Whitehall ones to the schools that I had, and I think the Montague yeah. ones too, and uh, yeah. the rest of them I think I just gave to the to the library. I think I don't remember yeah. exactly how how I did it, but I gave a lot of the stuff well, we away. But I still got a ton of stuff. Learning. We offered our news footage to, to the prosecutor's office and to the fire departments for history, and uh, all through the WZDM, but nobody wanted them. So I thought in the end, best interest to destroy it all. Yeah, I remember. So we I destroyed I, all the news footage. Well, I think I was helping you destroy them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was there were there were literally a thousand videotapes there that were all filled. Yeah. So, well, that's a say, uh, Paul and I hauled about a I don't know how many what was it uh a lot of the three quarter tapes the, uh, out video, of there the video country we basically threw all that away right you know that so yeah you know, because it didn't want you know run into a copyright situation so we basically put all that in the garbage so. but you know what the crazy thing is is that like i say today you can get it on you go to youtube and put in anything and you pretty much got it there now so whether yeah, it be Vivo you or off the web nowadays, oh yeah yeah much. yeah you don't need any it's like, like paul gave me a <laughs> he gave me all his uh his cds from uh back the the rpm days and the tm days when they you know used to get a weekly a weekly music uh cd he gave me all those i've got like just two huge crates of them and i'm thinking okay i got these now what do i do <laughs> I, i'm no, nothing no, to Paul's do with. not doing any more weddings or anything is he? no no not, not during the COVID time he's you know like i say he's 81 yeah. so he's not doing nothing right now just like yeah. me so you know he you know, Eon had all that equipment too. Yeah, yeah. In fact, he had over twenty thousand dollars in lighting equipment, one thing or another. Wow, including towers, every type of strobe light. Every my God, you couldn't believe all the stuff. He filled half of my garage with it. Yeah, well, and most of it he sold some and took a lot of it home because he was doing the nightclubs for a while there. Yeah, he was he was pretty extravagant. Cause I remember I went over to um, I don't even remember what it was called at this time. It's no longer it's called the yeah. spare wheel or spare wheel or something right yeah. now. Rusty spoke. Now, Rusty spoke. Yeah. yeah. But it would before yeah. the one before that or one before yeah. that or whatever. Anyway, he put in a system in there and, uh, they wanted me to DJ and it's like, he had such an extravagant unit with the karaoke stuff and the video stuff and the music stuff. It's like, nah, I don't think so. This looks a little more too complicated for me. <laughs> That's what they, they just destroyed all that stuff. Did it? The whole karaoke system, the new owner just took it all apart and threw it up oh, the Oh, jeez. Jeez, that's terrible. And the, the lighting, now the lighting and stuff, uh, he still has a lot of that. He uses it in his garage. <laughs> <Man cave. laughs> well, I remember I, I, got a, I bought a board from him at one time. It was a, the classic old board, and uh, I, I ended up giving it to my grandson because he was starting a band, and 
God only knows what happened to it after that. But anyway. We we still have a couple of the really good boards here. You know, big boards. Yeah. And the, the remote re- radio control lighting devices are still here, too. Yeah. The, the lights uh, in the ceiling were controlled by a two-way radio or by radio. Oh, jeez. They didn't actually have wires going to them. They had a little antenna on the back of the lights. One on this thing that sent it, signal to them. Now that, see, that's the place it, control. it sounds like you when you were young. I mean, you did Roberts Hall and yeah. did a big DJ system in there in the 70s. And you, yeah, you had huge. all kinds of, you had all kinds of DJ equipment in there too. I remember it was a, what was it? Some kind yeah. of a dance club or something for a while. Oh, it was disco at the time. We were using uh 750 Watts per channel with a center channel also. Yeah. And it was quite a, quite a system at the time. At the time, uh, yeah. yeah. And, uh, the, of course, it had all the strobe lights and all the uh, chasers and everything of that nature there. Yeah. Uh, I forgot there was over a thousand light bulbs in a chaser at the time. Oh, yeah. I'm ch- I can just imagine what the light bill was on that thing. <laughs> Actually, it wasn't that bad because most of the lights were like uh, seven and a half watts. Oh, okay. Okay. So. Yeah. But, that- uh, yeah. It one, you know, I can remember thousand dollar electric bills for any of them. Yeah, so. yeah. But like I say, it's it's funny when you say seven hundred and fifty watts aside, and you know, I've got yeah. like a <laughs> my basement. I got a twenty five hundred watt system. But anyway, but uh, yeah, well, that's seven hundred and fifty watts is really nothing. Yeah, but we also required. I also required every fifteen minutes to take a sound level reading. Uh, oh yeah, I, I remember anybody going deaf. Yeah, yeah. Well, I have to say, I've got, 20, yeah. I've got 2,500 watts, but there's no way in heck I'd ever turn it up all the way in my face. No, you wouldn't dare. No. So. 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 I think Paul still got 4,000 4, watts in his, in his garage or something like that. But anyway. Yeah. But uh, other than that, I mean, I have a turntable and record. Records. That's about all I keep anymore. Yeah, yeah. 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 I just. And that was for when I was doing uh round dancing and ballroom dancing oh yeah you did that, that too for a long time are you still do are you and mickey well you're not doing it now because i suppose you don't have any but no. did the, are you going to well, be it, getting into back into that or square well, dance? we were in florida we were dancing two days a week square dancing and round dancing yeah and taking lessons one but all that got canceled just everything just shut right down right yeah and that's why we decided to stay in michigan because the activities we went down there for no longer existing Right, right. So, so you no, think I'm just kind of hibernating? Yeah, is, is it is it is it trouble keeping the weight off now that you're hibernating? <laughs> That's what, is it what is it is it hard to keep the weight off now that you're hibernating and you're not doing the dancing? That's the major problem. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but what I did do is I bought I got a treadmill and a stationary bike, which is helping. Well, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. The biggest trouble I have is my food tray keeps falling off the treadmill. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but, well, you know, know the weight is definitely a problem. Yeah, yeah. Same with me. I understand that. Believe me, because like I say, I've got I've got a membership to go to the gym and everything, but there's no way I'm going to a gym. <laughs> no way. Uh, well, no. Most of them are closed. Yeah, yeah. I have to call again. The one yeah. up there in Apple and Mill Iron is totally up, closed and up for sale. Oh, really? Yeah. That was, that was owned by that uh, builder, and I can't remember his name. Uh, then after he, um, gave that up, somebody else took it over, but that's totally closed now. Okay. So. Yeah. I don't know if ours is closed again or not. It was open for a while and I went in there and to talk to him to see if it was safe and none of them were wearing masks. And I'm thinking, nah, I'm not going to win there. No, nah, that's okay. No. I'm good. But I've noticed that some of the larger department stores are not forcing the mask laws. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I don't, they, I don't get it, they, but. They enforce them when you walk in the door, but then the people immediately take them take off. Take them off. Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah. And I, I, not me, I'm keeping mine on all the time. Right. Well, you know, it's not just for your protection, it's for the other's protection also. So it's not, you know, yeah. it's it's kind of like a common courtesy to, to do it. So, yeah. but I don't know if courtesy is a thing of, the, thing of the past, I think. I don't know. Sometimes I wonder. Anyway, yeah, sir. Still up the doors. What's that? It's up. I still open doors for women. Yeah, oh, do you? Yeah. Would you Would you open <laughs> yeah. a door for me too if I came? Well, if you're wearing a skirt. <laughs> I gave my skirt up, so I don't think I'll be doing that. But anyway. 
I'm well, sure we could find one your size. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure. Um, just getting on me would be the problem. But anyway, um, it's it's. I just want to tell you, it's been a great. I had a great. I don't know, thirty years, I think, or twenty, at least twenty five years that I work with you. I I enjoyed enjoyed every minute of it, even the times where I was an idiot and told you to go do something with yourself and quit or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I always came back. I always came back yeah. and said, "Hey, let's get, I got this we want to do." Cuz I mean, I don't know how many different shows I did with you uh besides Video Country, besides, you know, after Jay passed, I did yeah. took over Video Country for a while and we took over uh we did the LV TV show and I did that with uh with Rick Carvey and uh John Hooker and and we did, you know, the Elvis impersonator guy. I mean, we had so much fun. Yeah. We just we had nothing but fun. Oh yeah. Grab a camera yeah, and Goodman did it. A, Lee Goodman had a really good show on for a long time. Last I seen him, by the way, he was really lost the weight. Oh, I don't that's know good. If he's still around or not? That's good. But he was look, looking really good. He lost a lot of weight. Yeah, yeah. Well, I haven't seen Lee for quite a few years. Um, I haven't seen him. For, I didn't. Last time I seen him was at Walmart. I think it was. I truthfully, I didn't even recognize him. He lost so much weight. Yeah. Did he still look like Elvis? I didn't, don't even recall. I don't, I didn't recognize you. He lost too much weight. So, um, the, the other one, we know one person we didn't talk about, of course, Ian Kelly, your son was a uh, part of the station a little bit and he's, he's done quite well for himself, but also the, the guy that pretty much took over after I left, um, that did everything over there as far as, um, editing and all that good stuff was your son, Chinu Kelly, who, yeah. who did, God, Chinu was amazing. He he did everything. He was he really took over. Now. Is he? Yeah, he's back here in Michigan. Uh, the place that he was working for in Indiana was bought out by another company, and they downsized. Big okay, time. yeah, that's that's and, the way it's uh, been going on. He was one of them that they downsized, and most a lot of the people that they hired from the original Fox and Grand Rapids that went to Indiana. They downsized and got rid of most of them. Right. And Chinu just having to fall into that category. Now, what about... So right now, he's staying here at the uh, with us the time being until he figures out what he wants to do. I do not think he wants to go into broadcasting anymore at all. Really? Oh, he's so good at it. So he's not He's not going to talk to Fox over there in Grand Rapids? Don't they downsized there, too? Well, they know they downsized, too. They went oh, okay. to... Uh, what they call hubbing. So the Fox in Grand Rapids is actually controlled out of Indiana now. Okay. All right. Uh, well, now I think they may have broke off from there, but, uh, I know for a long time they were controlled out of Indiana and I think, uh, would might have been too, but I'm not sure. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's, that's kind of the way with, with radio was kind of the same way with radio and same way with TV. As you know, radio, there is, there is no live performers anymore. I mean, live, uh, disc jockeys anymore. Uh, no, I remember handful. in the old days, you know, it was our job to still play a, you know, slap a record on the old turntable, and that right. was it. Right. And uh, we immediately, you know, you put another record on almost immediately. Right. You had two turntables running, using record cuts, and you went right from one direct turntable to the other, to the other, and back and forth. Right. And that's just the way it was. Yeah. So. Yeah, not anymore. But, uh, them days are gone. <laughs> yeah, days are gone. Well, you know, I was talking to one of my uh, radio friends, and they talked about when at one time when they worked for that, you know, that the devil, the iHeart Radio. Yeah, yeah, that one. Um, yeah. They uh, were doing like six stations from, you know, whatever location they were from. And some people were doing even more stations from the location they were from. So, you know. Now you worked at WLRC for a while, too, didn't you? LCS, you mean, or L LRC? Whitehall. Oh, yeah, yeah, the yeah. Rooms. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I worked there for off and on, you know, once in a while, but not very often. Uh, quite frankly, it was too far to drive, and there wasn't enough money in it. Yeah. Well, but, that uh, there never was enough money for me in radio, especially in this area. <laughs> <laughs> but, you no. know, I did other no. things. Like, that's why I got to DJing for, you know, clubs and, and weddings and all that no, good w stuff. Is WLRC still on the air there? LRC. AM and FM? LRC. What, I'm not sure what LRC is, to be honest with you. Right next to your house. Oh, is that is that that's a call letters for LRC? Well, yeah, I, it's still, it's, I think it's like, uh, uh, 
thought it was W W. Yeah. Anyway, it, it, yeah, it's still on the air. It's still on the air, but I think it's like uh, satellite delivered with the FM station. So, and I have no idea what's on the, the FM AM anymore. It, well, yeah, the AM's well, here. Time? Well, the AM's here, but it, it's just a it's just a um, um, transmitter site is all it is. Watch, yeah. Yeah, it's just yeah. a transmitter site is all it is anymore. The building's gone. It was kind of funny because when the train came by at nine o'clock every night. Yeah. And we we got a time so. And when you hear the train whistle, it's nine o'clock. Beep, beep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was kind no, of funny. no train now, we just the, people walking on the on the on the bike bike trail now. So yeah. Uh -huh. But yeah, when I when I was when I was over there, there was a you you know Jay Ron of course was there at the time. Jay Ron and that was be, yeah. that was in between Cheryl Lee or uh, anyway. So is but um. It, I'm trying to think. It was 1983, I think, when I was there. And um, anyway, yeah, the whole building is gone now. They totally tore the whole building down and just built a little transmitter, um, oh, like a really? like a shed. Yeah, it's like a shed yeah. now. So all that stuff is dying. gone. I wish I could have went in there and, and got some of that old equipment because that was in the old turn top turn pot boards and and the those turntables. Man, they, those things had to weigh. 200 pounds a piece, you know, those oh, big they old were, they were, they were, The retro cuts were doing very good. Yeah. The turn they were made. great. Yeah. Yeah. I would have loved to have one, one of those. When we were not getting the range we wanted to on the AM, we hooked the ground rods to the railroad tracks. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's been done more than once. <laughs> yeah. We've got more range that way. Yeah. So. Yeah. That was one of the things when, uh, when I worked at WLCS and the Eagle, is that we had that station and they called it the bear at the time, I think it was. And, and they hired this engineer and paid him some ridiculous amount of money. And that's what he did too. He ended up grounding the transmit, the tower to the railroad, railroad tracks. Yeah. Now the railroad tracks are no longer there. So I wonder what they said when they tore the railroad tracks out and saw that big old wire <laughs> hooked up to them. <laughs> But it's kind of funny, really. Yeah. Anyway, well, it's good to hear from you again, sir. Yeah, same. And uh, like I say, thanks for the for the thirty years or whatever that we we had. It was it was a ball. So. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. Well, thanks a lot, Oscar. You take care. How's your wife? She's doing good. Doing real good. Glad to hear that. Yeah. Okay. Take care. I'll catch you later. Then. All right. Thanks. All right. Mm -hmm. Bye. Thank you, Oscar. Yep. Bye. Bye. 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 Bye.